Close to a quarter of children in industrial countries around the world suffer from reoccurring headaches, abdominal pain and musculoskeletal pain. These types of pain are usually not caused by organ damage and are thus known as primary pain. As a result of this pain, many consult a doctor. Primary care is usually the first point of contact. Before we conducted our study, the available research wasn't clear about how effective primary care treatment is for children with primary pain and who is likely to need more specialised care. Therefore, with this study, we wanted to identify the treatment success rate as well as predictors of treatment failure in these children. To reach this objective, we chose a prospective longitudinal study design in a sample of children presenting to their primary care doctor due to presumed primary pain. Patients and their parents filled in a questionnaire at study inclusion. Three and six months later, we conducted a telephone interview. In 24 paediatric primary care practices, we recruited 266 children for this study. They were between 6 and 17 years old, 11 years on average. 37% were boys and 63% girls. Most children had headaches, followed by abdominal pain and then musculoskeletal pain. Some children had pain in more than one location. First of all, to determine the success rate of primary care for children with primary pain, we define treatment failure as the child continuing to experience disabling pain at the six-month time point. Using this definition in our sample, treatment was successful in 77% of cases and treatment failed in 23%. Next, to identify which patient characteristics were likely to predict treatment failure in primary care, we looked at a range of potentially relevant factors, considering categories such as demographics, pain characteristics, functional impairment, emotional distress, parental pain and treatment response after three months of primary care. Factors with a significant association with treatment outcome in univariate analyses were included in the larger multivariate model. This model allowed a very good prediction of treatment failure. The most important factors that emerged were a negative effective pain perception at study inclusion and a lack of treatment response after three months. This means a child experiencing disabling chronic pain at the three-month time point. This latter factor is particularly important. If a child did not respond to primary care treatment after three months, that child had an 80% risk of treatment failure at six months. These findings suggest a stepped care approach for treating children with primary pain is required. For the children who do not respond to primary care treatment after three months, Referral to a specialised pain treatment clinic would be the most appropriate approach. Such an approach could spare these children from ongoing suffering and frustrating ineffective treatments, as well as being more cost-effective for individuals and the healthcare system longer term.